Hey guys, Ian from Eurogamer here. Now, I was meant to go over to Montreal last month to get a first look at Thief, a reboot of the Thief series and the fourth game in the legendary stealth-based saga. Unfortunately for me, though, Tom Bramwell, Eurogamer's editor-in-chief, stole my plane ticket and went in my place. The lousy thief. While there, he also nabbed an exclusive interview with Daniel Winfield Schmidt and Stefan Roy from Eidos Montreal. So sit back, relax, and get ready for a huge dose of brand new Thief info. Take it away, Tom. Did you drop the Thief name with the four in it um, because everyone thought it was ridiculous? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Uh, no, it's. Uh, from the beginning, on our side, uh, it was clear that uh, it's we, we we want to restart it, reinvent it. So it's thief period. I think because the slightly snarky um, elements of the internet are interested in this, you know, why the decision was originally made, what what, what changed it. It's still over quite a lot of your power points and stuff as well. So. You, you you see that um, this franchise is amazing for that. When we we, we talk about it, it's really uh, you know very often we're going to talk about let's say the weather. And who cares about the weather? It's uh, yeah, it's there. cloudy, whatever. And, and there is not really passion behind behind it, you know. When we talk about this game, this franchise, wow, it's black or white, you know. You cannot do it. You do it like that, and uh, so uh, just that thief with the four in the logo. You, you, it's uh, it, it, according to me, it's like okay, and but no, this is important, and you cannot play with that. So it's uh, it's an interesting, let's say, pressure for us to make sure that we have to be. Very, we have to know what we do, and we have to be able to explain why we uh, we, uh, we, did, uh, we took that type of decision for this aspect of the gameplay and stuff like that. Because the passion of people about this franchise is really high. Did you learn anything from the Deus Ex sort of experience about how to sort of balance the requirements of the existing fan base against the need to make something feel fresh and modern? Yeah, uh, one thing we have learned from them also is to uh, give us right to to be wrong. Okay, uh, let's uh, you know. Uh, it's a complex, complex beast, uh, this franchise, and uh, so we had to try, uh, you know, a lot of stuff, making sure, right, can, is it really thief if we go in this direction? No, let's come back. So, I'm pretty sure you're going to, you're about to ask me, all right, it's been a long time between the official announcement and today, and it's a big part of the, it's a big part of the explanation. We gave us the, the, the permission to ourselves to, to sometimes to try something, and you know what, it doesn't work, you know. It's a lot of iteration in different aspects. How we design the main character, how do we? Is it a first-person game or a third-person game and stuff like that? So today we are ready to talk to you because we think we have the good recipe. But uh, yeah, it's a it's a complex uh, complex thing. One of the things that came out of this uh, the homework uh, yeah. process, this group was how do we define the play styles of the players? And this is a, like a ideology behind how we design the, the game. Uh, one of the things we want to do is make sure that certain players. Um, like you, all right. Um, kind of want to you know, have limited time, you know, as kids and so on. And when you get home, you just want to. I want to have a good experience of being immersed in this world, and, and the, the you know universe has a lot to offer. Uh, so we want to make sure that certain players have that opportunity. But at the same time, people like me and some even hardcore thief fans on we have on the dev team, um, they are have different expectations from what how they would play the game. Uh, and this is something that's very important for us to not alienate those players because a lot of them have a very you know, good idea of what they want and expect from the Thief universe in terms of gameplay and the lore and all these things. And we want to do as much as we can to make sure that we give them something that they will find really valuable. So one of the things that's been highly debated uh, online is the, all these special like uh, navigation markers, this HUD feedback and so on. We want to make it optional. If you don't want it, you know what? It's okay. Uh, knock yourself up, have fun. Um, I won't use it. I enjoy the game uh, without those assists. One thing that was really noticeable in the, um, uh, the demo you showed was the sort of the inner monologue giving a lot of hints to the player as he goes. Is that something that, that you expect or you're going to allow people to sort of switch off so they can just really figure everything out themselves? What kind of hints like the contextual? Well, as, as he's walking around, he's talking to himself saying, oh, I better go up there or Ooh, maybe I'll do this, that or the other in a, you know, in a suggestive way. The way that a lot of games at this point basically tell you what to do as you're playing them. It's um, okay. So the, the question, Daniel, the question I understand because we are going to have some contextual button and stuff like that. Yes, you can turn it off or, or not. About Garrett, uh, talking in her voice. Monologue, you know, yeah. It's um, it's really part of 
the character, you know, comments, cynical comments and stuff like that. Now, um, is it annoying because now it's okay, I should open the door because behind the door there is this hidden spot. Uh, you're right, we have to be very careful with that. Uh, so if I read between lines, according to you, maybe in the this morning demo, it's a little bit too much. I, I just get this in games generally. I, I kind of think, like I was playing, I, I really like Tomb Raider, for example, but I did, I did, there were times when it did sort of, sort of present puzzles and I was thinking, right, okay, what do I have to do? Oh, stop talking, Laura, you just told me the solution. Um, I don't have a problem with characters talking to themselves. They play, obviously, it builds um, a lot of um, other things into the game. But maybe if you had it so that the thing, the cynical type of stuff, the, the observations about the world were there, but maybe the other stuff, like, oh, I better climb up on that ledge that's over there, look over there now, go there. I keep it in mind, but the about the inner thought and the uh, you know cynical comment and stuff like that that we really want to keep it because it's, it's part of the garret you know it's yeah. i would i would yeah and I mean, it's, yeah, uh, that, it's uh, so uh, let's find the uh the perfect spot where it's too much and bring it back so okay can i send <laughs> my uh, yeah we, we're gonna avoid the uh garrett talks to you as in your child we, that's not our intention yeah. <laughs> Because that's, I mean, that's what like the hardcore guys will, will hit you pretty hard on that. If if they start playing and they feel like it's playing itself for them. Um, but honestly, yes. honestly, it's not it's not in the plan because uh, yeah, we don't want to kill the uh, Garrett as a th that type of cynical character. So we, yeah, we we don't even want to go close on that. So it's not the plan. We are we have other mechanic to help uh, that people like me, eh, eh, uh, who doesn't want to uh, you know spend uh, ten thousand. Uh, Ten thousand hours to, to solve something. So we have some philosophies on top that the, you know, there's the, the main story and there's the main like the progression of the game, which has to be at a certain level. Uh, uh, you know, everybody should be able to get through the main story. But we have a lot of stuff which say, you know what, let's crank up the difficulty on, on this thing because I know like some people will not have time to do all the exploration and really crank all the corners. But for those who start doing that, you will find secrets and maybe even secrets yeah. within secrets and then secrets within the secrets. So this is the kind of thing where the where the hardcore would find a lot more depth, depth, uh, and this is also for the depth. <laughs> and for <laughs> I'm not gonna go there. I'm gonna, um, but uh, again, the franchise also based on the layers. So the city was based on city. Uh, it was rebuilt and rebuilt and rebuilt. It had all these layers, and that's something we also want to have in terms of the exploration and the curiosity of the players. The old games had the awesome like secret puzzles where you had to uh, shoot an arrow to an apple kind of thing, and you know that, these are the things you, you you remember, and that's. But also, we want to bring from the original Thief uh, franchise. The, the, the Xbox is rumored to um, uh, demand uh, Kinect features be in every single game, and obviously, Sony's invested in Move as part of the controller. Those sort of extended functionality, sort of, um, are those things that you, you plan to support, that you want to support, are they useful? How is it to the sort of Thief universe? Uh, one thing that we just want to make sure is to avoid the fact that it's a kind of gimmick, you know, that it sounds exciting after, and after five minutes you turn it off because. It, you know, it's just not useful for your, your the gaming experience. Uh, and again, because we really want to see you in the future, please come back. We'll give you more uh, information about that. Uh, because yeah, it's uh, our game is really planned for the uh, what's coming in the future. So no choice. We have to take care about that. So one of the things you see a lot in the Thief community is that they show a lot of the YouTube videos and how they do the playthroughs and how they found the secret and yeah. so on. Uh, the PS4 has a share button, which is, could be an opportunity for us to really allow them to share in a more easy way. Yeah, my big expectation is to that people will, because right now the speech is, uh, we are working very hard now to convince you that you're going to have a multi multiple option to go in you know, some place or that. And like, uh, like you said, uh, now we wish that people will uh, you know, prove by themselves that it's more than a sale pitch. It's really a fact, you know, by posting and yeah. video and proving that, hey, I did it like that, I did it like that, I did it like that, and oh, okay. It's, 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 it's the beat switch. Thanks guys. If you're anything like me, you'll be pretty excited about Thief right now, but sadly it's not due for release until sometime in 2014. Fear not though, as Tom has also written an in-depth preview of the game featuring loads of info not covered in this interview, and you can read it right now by clicking on that annotation at the top of the video. As always though, please do give us a subscribe by clicking on that bottom annotation. We'll be bringing you as much Thief info as we can in the coming months, as well as exclusive interviews and early gameplay footage of all of the best upcoming games of this generation and next. Thanks for watching.